Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to another edition of Inside the Firm. I'm your host, Alex Gore. I'm here with Lance Clean Teeth Psycho. <laughs> gotcha! Every quarter, get your teeth clean. Gotcha good! Like an adult. Like a, yep, like an adult. You only got one body. We have some cool stuff for you today. We're going to talk about the economy, uh, how to successfully launch a Google business listing, um, ARE Jeopardy. No Nick. Nick, send us reads. We love to hear your voice. Uh, before we get into that, we want to get into how you can build a better company. Go to build a build a better co.com. Watch our training on the five steps, five shifts to five figure profit. <coughs> Take a look at it. It's all free. It's going to help you out no matter what. If you want to continue along the journey, you can go check it out. Architects can't find the product data you're looking for. You might be using the wrong search engine. Broad search results. Broad searches result in consumer products, out-of-date information, and websites that hide or don't have the information you're looking for. If you need specifications, CAD or BIM, RCAT.com is your search engine. Find and download the up-to-date data you need fast. RCAT.com is free and requires no registration, so try RCAT today. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com. Check them out. Architects, this is also for you. I need you to head on over to PellaLuxury.com forward slash the firm. I want you to experience a collection of brands that brings your creative vision to life. The luxury division of Pella is a world-class collection of brands, including Duratherm, Riley, and Benelli, all pioneers of industry who provide window and door solutions to discerning architects, the building industry, and beyond. During 2023, we know how important it is to step back and spend time in gratitude. We appreciate all our clients trusting us with their projects in a record-breaking year in 2020. We are, are excited and ready to take on the new year in 2023. The luxury division of Pella doesn't push beyond limits. They set them. Explore PellaLuxury.com forward slash firm today. Al, are you screen recording? I am are you now. Al screen recording, Gore? I am Helping now out three. Mr. Podcast Editor Lance. There we go. Uh, let's talk about the billing index from the AIA, which is actually one of the things that I love that they do. Their um, yearly review is also pretty good, too. I know that we uh, make fun of them sometimes for their lack of marketing skills, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. <laughs> if you're not open to criticism, you're not open to improvement. There Just you saying. Go. <laughs> there you go. So the cool, this is the title, Cool April Businesses Billings Reflect Wider Economic Uncertainty. So the billings went down negative 1.9. Project inquiries went up from hmm. the previous month, 0.8. Design contracts went up 0.9. Um, so what this is telling me is while, while billings are going down, inquiries and design contracts seem to be matching They um, and went up from the before. I think if people are looking, they are, uh, I, I don't know if I'd say that they're serious or not. I don't know. I don't know if I would say that they're serious or not. I think people. I think people are half serious while they're looking. Yeah. Re regardless, you, you know what I mean. Um, I think giving them a little more credit is okay. All right. Here's a quote: uh, "The ongoing weakness in design activities at architecture firms reflect clients' concerns regarding the economic outlook." Says our favorite AIA chief economist, Kermit Baker, honorary AIA, in a press release from the organization. Kermit. <coughs> Quote, high construction costs, extended project mm -hmm. schedules, elevated interest rate, and growing difficulties in obtaining financing are all weighing on the construction market. Um, I believe all that's true. I think he nailed it. I, I think they're going to do 0% for the next three to four months. Did you know mortgage rates jumped a half a percent this last week? Ouch. Yeah. Which is independent of the Fed. It's influenced by the Fed, obviously, but I just kind of do what they do. So it's tough. Yep. And then once they start to lower the rates to like, um, you know, there's going to be a, a lot of competition for the, the housing that comes up yeah, and, and for refinancing and all that. So uh, we'll see how it goes. 
I, I, I just hope that they don't raise the rates anymore. Yeah. Me too, buddy. I hope so too. I hope so too. We'll see. Uh, a pause would be good. I think we're. All, I think a pause would be okay. You guys are pushing it to the limit. Please, freaking pause. Janet Yellen, I know you're listening. I know you're. A, I know you're a listener. It's hard to listen with all that yelling. <sighs> I was no one said that before. <laughs> they probably probably have. They probably have. Uh, oh, uh, two two things I want. I'm I'm here to talk about today is. <clears throat> This episode is uh, hopefully helpful to a friend uh, that I just went fishing with. I will not name his name, but he knows who he is. And I said, this episode is going to be for you in regards to a couple things. And, and the first thing is, is what is for everybody, obviously, is like, if you are, if you don't have a Google business listing, just a reminder that this is the modern day Yellow Pages or white pages or whatever it is for for businesses, right? It's the, that modern day book. We don't even send those books out anymore, which is awesome, right? They finally quit that stuff. Yeah. If you don't have that in addition to your website and it's free to do and I understand that if you if something is free, you're the product. Um but in this in this regard, you are you are you are obviously benefiting from it because people can find you, they can contact you, they can get in touch with you, they can hopefully start to do business with you. So you need to ha- it needs to happen in addition to your, your website, right? Or you might be where we're at right now, which is we are we have we are transitioning the satellite office in Denver into a full fledged office in Denver, and with that, we've been working with our marketing team and the staff member that we've moved up in the firm to successfully launch a Google business listing in Denver. So there's, a, there's some key things I want to go over with everybody that I think if you're considering doing this, or if you're even trying to rebrand. And, and emphasize what you're doing. And Alex goes over this in his course too at build, buildabettercode.com is <clears throat> first, there's three things. First thing is you got to, you've got to consider the portfolio that you're going to put up on the Google business listing. And there's a very critical point actually that I was reminded of <coughs> by the staff member who got this uh, Google business listing up from us was your first image is going to be your cover. So whatever you upload, know that that is what is going to be the cover of the Google business listing. So like, I'm going to show you two different examples of this. So I'm going to go to F9 productions, Longmont, and you'll see it on the screen up here. Our cover photo, come on. Our cover photo on that one is uh, the East watch house, which is our most famous house to date. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's, we get a ton of attraction through that from various publications and all that. And I think it does speak to like where we are in location wise. Longmont is close to the foothills. It's not as urban as Denver. Um, and in Northern Colorado still has a lot of land to develop in the foothills or on the prairie. So, you know, these single family detached homes is our bread and butter anyway. Yep. And so, you know, that's, that's the one I think is the best for us. Denver though, here's our Denver location now. And this has uh, a Reed Street, which is a modern, a super modern, still got that farmhouse look. It is absolutely 100% Denver metro area centric. So really consider that first one. That, that's a major point that I think like, I don't even know who else would, would talk about that. Because what we were as reminded of again is like you can't, there's no ordering tools in the Google business listing where you can order, like say which images you want to see first or last or whatever. Yep. So what we had we had we had staff member do, and then Alex and I reviewed it multiple times. Was they put together a spreadsheet, put it together with your team, focus on the work that you want to present with this location, right? So like Denver is obviously much more metro, so that's you know cities versus Longmont, which is more rural, and and curtail what you put up there for that if you have two locations. If you have only have one location, I still think you got to consider it in that way for for for, for whatever you put up. What do you mean? Consider it in, in what way? Like one location. What are you trying to attract? Yes. That's all. Just just what yeah. are you trying to attract? Yep. What, you put it out there. You're still. I think. Don't be afraid though. Like you're still going to attract other inquiries that are one offs and build up that portfolio. Like, let's say you have no brewery experience. You're, eventually, hopefully, you'll get one of those or a shipping container project or or whatever you're you're doing on your with your pro- with your with your firm. Did they? I, I got to sidetrack you for a little bit. That's good. In the brewery, when they were talking, and, and I know one of 
the biggest things that we've already stated is like you went to their brewery, right? After the initial sales meeting, I made yep. it a point to take my wife there on a date yep. so they would notice me yep. and do a special touch because that was such a special project for us to get it under our belt. When they asked, do you have any experience in this? Um, how are you not going to screw it up because you've never done this before? What did you say? I'm sure they didn't phrase it like that. Uh, I said, we will do, I said, I actually kind of threw it back to them. And I said, a, a lot of the information that will inform what we do, I go, we're licensed architects. We're fully insured. We do a great job. You know, I just reminded them about all the Google reviews that we beat everybody out of the water. We're Colorado's top rated firm. Yeah. And I said, but, uh, but I said, really magical and well done projects rely heavily on the owner's to make sure that they are providing us with the kind of information we need in order to do the right code analysis to to do specialty projects like this. So, so, so then I asked them like, tell me where you're going to get the you know the tanks from, and could we walk through? Uh, actually, there was another meeting. I said, yeah. could we walk through? Could we do us? Could we do us? Uh, if we're retained, could we do before we start the design process? Can we go on a just spend a whole day or a morning going to different breweries and yeah. walk through their processes? And because they're brewers, they uh, they have our, their brewer friends and everything. So that was that was a big one. Yep. That was a big one. I don't think any other architects s- suggested that. Yep. Yep. So we ended up winning in that way. Uh, the second thing you need to have is you need to have your reviews on deck. So we emphasize this real heavily. You've heard this before. And I there's I, if people are listening and, and you know who you are and, and I've I've seen you comment on certain threads in social media where you say like, I think it's creepy to ask for reviews. I, uh, please never have an employee because like, my God, you, you, you got to get beyond this idea that it's creepy to ask for a review when you've done such an outstanding job for, for your folks, whether it's your consultants or your clients, like get over, get over that whatever tepid reason you have for that. So back to sort of, you know, where we're at, F9 Longmont, 76 five-star reviews. And then Denver, we only launched it last Friday. So we're recording this a Friday after we launch it. We already have 11 five-star reviews up. And we're already we're already in the middle of the pack for Denver Architects. If we can get above 30, we're in the top 1% yeah. for, for those Google reviews. So that's why it's important to have these reviews on deck. And we, what we did is, and I'll show you guys here, I'm going to pull it up on the screen is, if you're watching on YouTube, is some example emails. I'll, I'll read them too. So there's two example emails that we sent out, one for clients and one for consultants. If you're, if you're, if when I said consultants, you swerved while you were driving and listening <laughs> to this, I understand. It might sound counterintuitive, right? But how, but at the same time, like you are technically hiring the consultants. They are working with you. That's a business relationship. Why aren't you reviewing each other if it's a good business relationship? Yep. These are the easiest, the easiest five-star reviews to get. The hardest ones are the clients. That's a longer-term relationship that has its ups and downs and highs and lows. And, and as long-time listeners know, you need to ask for those reviews when there's a high point, like they just got their permit, you just finished the drawings, they finished their house, um, stuff like that, right? Or, or if there's any leverage of like, if you're, let's say they come back to you after you, they even have the permit, like we have with a couple of clients and they are like, Hey, can you just crank out a quick rendering to help me see this? And then you, and then you can say something like, yes, yes, we'd be happy to do that. Tell you what, we'll do it gratis. If we could just get a five-star review in return and it almost works every single time. Yeah. People are happy about that. So here's the emails. There's two emails. I took out the names. The first one is hi, consultant. We are expanding with another office in the Denver metro area this week, and much of the expansion is due to F9 aligning with professionals like you. We have listed a Google business page and would appreciate a five-star review to get it off the ground and running. In turn, F9 and the members of F9 would provide a five-star review for your Google business page as we truly value your work and working with you. Here's a link to the review page. Um, it, it, you'll have to, If you run the Google business, you'll, you'll see that you can do this kind of shortened URL. Thanks and thanks for your help in this effort. Our success is your success. Thanks. That that's how we instantly got boosted up super quick. The client ones are harder, like I said. So the client one is, "Hi client, we are pleased to announce that F9 Productions is expanding with another office in the Denver metro area this week, and much of this expansion is due to great clients like you. We have listed a Google business page and we appreciate a five-star review to hit get off the ground and running." 
Uh, here's a link to the pay review page. Thank you for your effort. Helping this effort, our success is directly a result of your dreams. So uh, the, the third thing is, the third thing is, then there's the website copy. So, and this is where if you are launching, maybe you're launching from scratch. Obviously, you need a website, I think. But if you're doing this, if you're doing a, uh, another branch, you should have another uh, website copy for that specific branch. Exactly. So like in your about tab, well, let's say you just have an about button. It, you can make it into a tab and it can say, uh, you know, Denver office and your, your other office, let's say it's Longmont. Um, and it's just talking about more specifically what you do and the pictures and images related to that area. And then also the, the next technique is you do stay, say in that page, like while our office is in Denver, we serve the larger Colorado area. And then for the Longmont, while our office is in Longmont, we, um, we serve the larger Colorado area and specifically Northern Colorado, you know, so that they're aware. Yep. Further clarification. Uh, so those are the three keys to do it. I just can't recommend it enough as I think like this is an easy layup for you. <clears throat> Honestly, it's easier than even making a website. I would say if I was going to restart another business, I would immediately spend my time on a Google business listing first and foremost to try to get off the ground and running than I even would a website. I think the Google business listing has to happen first. Yeah. I'd, um, and here's an example. Uh, I got an email. I don't think you even know about this from a civil engineer. We have multiple civil engineers that we work with and, and they're pluses and minuses, but, but generally all right, pretty yep. good. Um, and he, he said he's been working for 22 years. He's now two years on, on his own. I said, great. Can you send me any examples, you know, of your work or your website? And then he sent back, uh, a description of what he did and said he has no website and that he's getting on it. If he at least would have had a Google listing with a couple of reviews, I didn't even forward to you because like, you it wasn't have, even worth it. You have no website. Yep. You have, you, you, you told me what you did and I know like, okay, maybe it's weird to send drawings, but like, I kind of wanted drawings or pictures or links to stuff. You know what I mean? Like something, something. And maybe that's just me and visual, but like, you know, we have this little, uh, this part, isn't it, isn't it a test of if they align with your fundamentals? Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's water retention in this apartment complex right outside. Like even just a picture, like, Hey, I designed this like, Oh, cool. Okay. That's a legitimate thing that you did. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Last thing I want to talk about today before we jump into ARE Jeopardy is, um, th some clickbait. Which I appreciate the clickbait because I got engaged with it too, and I'm not trying to uh, crap on Nikita at all. Nikita's actually been on the show. Uh, she is a copywriter and a messaging strat strategist for architects. If she somehow listens to this or knows we ended up doing this clip, I have invited you, Nikita, to come back on. You can come back on anytime. Just rip into Lance. <laughs> yeah. I'll be on your side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I probably won't be there, but if you want to, yeah. So she's cool. She does uh, She does really good copywriting, and she has good critiques about uh, sales, marketing. She's much on the side of the business of architecture, Entree Architect community, our side, um, in terms of uh, architects need to be just as equally business-driven as they are artist-driven. So she starts with her post on LinkedIn here, and it says, uh, let's stop the ego shaming. Architecture, by its very nature, demands a unique combination of creativity, vision, and confidence. And after helping hundreds of architects write their website, I've learned an architect with a biggish ego can be a good thing as long as it's balanced with humility. Ego is defined as a person's self-importance. A healthy ego pushes architects to dream big, challenge the status quo, and, em and embrace innovation. It's not about arrogance. It's about navigating complex challenges and advocating for the value of architecture with confidence. What do you think? Would love to hear your thoughts on this topic, Al Gore. Yeah, I, I kind of want to go after your thoughts because you brought it up. What I did is I, I just, I joked and I commented and I said, I'm still going to ego shame architects. Meaning? Uh, so I think that's why I read it in full first Yeah. before saying this is because obviously Nikita, it was, it's good clickbait. I'm saying it's good clickbait. She's very good at what she does. Obviously she got me engaged with this post. There's like a technique. Tyler will Tyler Sue Mala, if he's listening, knows 
that's how he launched his whole thing is like there's there's codes unwritten codes and like rules yep. to how you post on LinkedIn. Yeah. And it engages people. So I'm glad that she it's obvious then from what she wrote she goes an architect uh with a bigish ego can be good a good thing as long as it's balanced with humidity. And then the word confidence, right? She the fact that she used the word confidence, that's really what it comes down to. Is I think like you can go over the line and look arrogant. And some people will some people will uh paint the picture that you're arrogant and confuse your arrogance you can confuse your confidence with arrogance yep. and that's the fine line to, to to ride i think so and i think i get it i was confused at first <laughs> because it said let's stop ego shaming which then means it the first sentence is like you should be confident in ego promotion if you're going to stop ego shaming architects right? Mm -hmm. Then you should be okay. Both, you know, putting your chest out, bolstering what you can do and all that. And I, then I think what she gets into and then what you are, are agreeing with is, um, being the guide, right? Donald Miller, where Yoda is the, the coolest, uh, what, what, what are they, what are they called? Where they can move stuff. Jedi. Jedi in the world. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I don't even like Star Wars. I know. <laughs> it's oh, I mean, the last six movies that they did besides Road One like ruined it. Let's be honest. So, anyways, <laughs> what it's getting at is like your ego promotion should be in service to the client. Where so where Luke can't raise his his fighter out of the swamp, you know, Yoda little comes out there and he's like, oh, just move it up for you. Like, why can't you do that? And then like he finally can. Um, so. I think that's the proper context is your ego is there to show them like, Hey, I know how to do this. And I will help you make your dreams come true. Bingo. Bingo. That's your name. We have a out. winner. We have, a what winner. did I win? You won a moving on to the next segment of the show. What is it? Which is airy jeopardy. Let's bring down the team. Let's go. Question number one, everyone who's driving, please stop because you will need math for this. Pull over and do it with us. A commercial building is being designed with a total occupancy load of 200 people. Write that down. <clears throat> the building code requires a minimum of one toilet fixture for every 40 occupants. Write that down. That's one toilet for every 40, one urinal for every 60. How many toilets and urinals should be provided in the building based on the occupancy load? I'm going to pause and talk while they do some math, and then I will give out the answers. So I'm going to say toilet first, numbers of toilet first in my answers, and then numbers of urinals. So it's 200 people, and then the toilets are one for 40, and the urinals are one for 60. Let me know. Ross is good. Jason is good. Gresh is good. A, four toilets, two urinals. B, five toilets, four urinals. C, six toilets, two urinals. And D, five toilets and 3.33 .3 urinals. What do we got? Correct. Even though 3.33 uh, is correct, you, got, you can't do a, a third of a urinal. You got to round up. You could try. You, you could try. I'm just saying you could try. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just for kids. It's a kid size urinal. Yeah. Yep. Question two. When designing a new office building, which of the following sustainable design strategies can contribute to, remember these, reducing energy consumption and improving indoor air quality? Those are what we're looking for. Is it A, installing energy efficient lighting fixtures? Is it B, incorporating operable windows and natural for natural ventilation c implementing a rainwater harvest system or d all of the above when designing a new office building which of the follow sustainable design strategies can contribute to reducing energy consumption and improving indoor air quality 
Correct. Number two. These are the windows light, <laughs> which reduce energy consumption and indoor, and then they're operable for air quality. Number three, the Sagrada Familia, an iconic basilica in Barcelona, was designed by which architect? Is it A, Antoni Gaudi, B, Le Corbusier, C, Frank Gehry, or D, Santiago Calatrava? Correct answer is A. I'm pretty sure everybody got that one. Number four, which architect is known for designing the Burj Khalifa? That exactly. The tallest building in the world. A, Norman uh, Foster. B, I am Pei. C, Cesar Pele. Or D, Adrian Smith. Ha! I like that reaction, boys. Correct answer is D, Adrian Smith. Did anyone get it right? Oh, man. Okay. What do we have? What do we got for scores? Three? Ooh. Wow. Here's a tiebreaker. Okay. So whoever writes it down fastest. Or says it. Uh, yep. Or say, says it. Right. Yeah. I would say it's whoever. Uh, these are all chat GPT. Okay. These are all chat GPT on my end. Same for me, actually. <laughs> it's just working out so well. Yeah. I thought mine were decent. They were bad. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay. What architectural landmark? La what architectural landmark was designed by Antoni Gaudi and is still under construction to this day? Ah! Oh, wow. oh, I feel like Jason, but if you guys can agree on lunch, then whatever. Yeah. Nailed yeah, it. We have two winners. That was insanely in sync. That's inside the firm for today. Yeah. All right. If you like this episode, you're watching on YouTube, please leave us a positive comment. Subscribe if you're listening on iTunes. Five-star review. If you have gifts, send them my way. I will take them. We'll see you next week.